All right, Slackwaster so fans, continuing with Little House on the Prairie Season 1. We're going to start watching uh, the second half of the season. Let's check it out. Episode 13, The Lord is My Shepherd, Part 1. Carolyn has some surprise news for Charles that she's expecting. Laura wants it to be a girl because she's the tomboy in the house. I hope God wants a girl. Although Pa wants that boy. Talking about your wife. She keeps saying it over and over. It's a boy. It's a boy that he has. Charles Ingalls Jr. Sure you want me to give you a hand with it? No, I'm strong enough, Pa. Huh? I can do anything. Laura's a little unhappy, so she wants to prove that she can be a boy. Where am I going to see this? Of course, in my case, Nellie and Willie are more than enough. In the case of Nellie and Willie, I couldn't agree with you more. Turns out that Charles Jr. isn't gaining weight. He might be a little sickly. You've got a special one for Charles. Ma has to stew. I don't have to. Don't you even care about your own brother? I'll tell you the truth. We've seen this many times. You know what the problem is, but there's nothing we can do. Charles Jr. is in the right survive. And he passes away. Laura ends up running off when she finds out because she thinks because she didn't pray. God took Charles Jr. away. Lord is my shepherd, part two, episode 14. Open up the door. Let the sun shine in. Hardy, turn the milk. What is Hardy's dressing going? What I like? Laura did come back, obviously, but then now she's run away. Laura's going to climb that mountain to get closer to God. So what I was wondering is, since you have a son, maybe you would like a little girl with you. You could send my brother back off. She wants to trade. She meets Ernest Borgnine on this mountain. Where am I? Don't you know? Sure. You're on my mountain. I can't help it. Pa's children aren't supposed to have any. Your pa seems like a bright man. Oh, he is. So is my mom. She used to be a school teacher. She knows a bunch of stuff. Well, the short of it is, I would make kind of a trade deal with God. So as I could be with him, my brother could come back and be with my pa. Pa wants his son real bad. And that's about it. Meanwhile, Pa and Mr. Edwards are out searching for her. Pa finds a cross, a cross that Jonathan made for Laura, so he thinks he's on the trail. Laura's name is on it. As long as it has to be. And sure enough, they spot a sign. What do you make of that? Come on. She hears 
them coming when they get close. No, child. Let me go. No. I don't want Bonnie to find me until God answers. He has answered. No, he hasn't. He has answered. And he's made his decision. That's why he sent your pa. And of course they reach her. And just like that, Jonathan's gone. Jonathan? Jonathan! Episode 15, Christmas at Plum Creek. This is the first Christmas that the family spends in Walnut Grove. Will you take five dollars for him? Nellie wants to buy not sale. Laura's horse you bunny. You can't say that. Only a paw can say that. He's for sale. It's isn't even strangles. I'm afraid not, Nellie. That's Laura's pony. If she doesn't want to sell him, she doesn't have to sell him. Deliver before Christmas? Before Christmas, and you don't have to buy him if you don't want him. Oh, I'm going to make some wagon wheels Done. for Good Mr. Enough. Olson's customers. Extra Christmas money. <laughs> Laura loves her pony. Yeah. See, is it because you feel like riding or because you feel like making Nelly jealous? A little of both, I guess. Mary yeah, gets you, a you job, too. Helping this woman so close. I'll give you space in this so that you can take over. But first, here. Have your milk and your donuts. Carrie found a penny. Well, this tag happens to be wrong. It should read one penny. And one penny is what I'm going to take for it. Could you wrap it, please, Mr. Olson? Pa wants to buy a stove for Christmas. You you make a on the stove. Well, but it's a good deal, all right. But the only thing is that uh, you can't have that stove. Why not? Well, somebody else has already bought it. I'm just toying. And I think this is Christmas Eve. And we have a delivery. Hey, Olson, got a delivery for you. Hold it. Oh, I need a hand to get it. Hey, it's not chicken that's Christmas morning. Oh, Mary good. made a shirt for Pa. Look at that, Carolyn. Which is exactly oh, like the one. It looks like a perfect fit. Carolyn got for him too. Pa made a saddle for I Bunny. Know what you want? I had a hard time keeping it hidden from you too. So why don't want you sneak it in the barn? And the big gift is open. Oh, no. The person who Nels was holding it for was I Laura. That Turns out Laura sold Bunny to oh, Nellie Lord. for money to buy that stove. Oh, I just love my stove. Oh, don't cry. Someday we'll have another pony. Episode 16, Family Quarrel. Family and quarrel oh, yeah. involves the Olsons. Nick, you must take time off from honest work. <laughs> Nels may have reached his breaking point. I do point. wish you would not leave your smelly old fishing paraphernalia. Be tempered woman, and it would be better off for this whole town. You're calling me the nasty It would be better off for this whole town if you were locked up in a cage and fed with a stick. What? You have made life Our miserable for. Wait, fool, mouse. Oh, is that right? Yes. Well, that Nels apologizes, even though some of the things he said were true. Well, <laughs> you can be a, a pecky woman <laughs> who takes you. I mean, you, you can get pretty mean with your nagging times. Has it ever occurred to you that I might have something to nag about? Well, Nels decides he's going to move out. There's a boarding room in town. She offers to take her kids for a few days. Even the Reverend can't get them together. You disgraced me before the whole town, and I want nothing less than a public apology. I disgraced you! Now, you naggy, pecky woman! Sorry, you disgraced me! Oh, there, you thought being called at me by those ridiculous. Doc Baker wants to make Nels jealous, so he sends Mr. Hansen over to. 
phony woo her. She what? She threw a whole scoop of flour on him. Oh, she had an egg? She <laughs> It's not funny. Harriet's playing the move. Those pants charge are part of that. Well, Mary, she's got to have it. It's the only good trunk in town. She can't come in here herself after what happened. Yeah, well, that is just what I'm talking about, what happened. She plans to take the two kids out east. Move. The Ingalls devised a plan to... A businessman, uh... Make each of them defend their partner. Well, you could surprise you. At times. <laughs> I remember it. Surprise you. Power uh, works yeah. on Nels. Very sharp with figures. You do a three column sum in her head. I've seen her do it. You work? Of course it works. Oh, I love you, Nels. And all is well in the Olsen. Episode 17. Doctor's Lady. This is Mrs. Olson's niece. Looks like a hand in her ankle. She fell off the uh, wagon. It's just a veterinarian, but he's always good. Hurt her ankle and her wrist. The niece is played by Ann Archer, and she knew the doc was here, and she's kind of spitting with him. So she pretends to be injured again. Oh, Dr. Baker, it's been a pleasant surprise. I missed all I brought you sit down. Oh, thank you. I'm, I'm really fine. You haven't answered my question, Dr. Baker. In spite of the age difference, tomorrow? She wants to go out with him on a date. I'd be delighted. And I'd be delighted to accept. Harriet, of course, thinks he's too old for her. Is that man in love with you? I hope so. Love is blooming, though. I do love you, Kate. And I love you. I mean, he gives her, well, kind of a ring. It's made from his grandfather's <laughs> necklace, I believe. I think I know what you're trying Doc's to say. Doc's starting to have second thoughts. I'm not sure I want to hear it. Because of the age difference. Sooner or later. Have you stopped loving me? Okay. My friends are your father's age. My memories, my habits, they go back twice as far as yours. It's springtime for you. Doc's not gonna do it. And that's the end of the romance. I still, wish. I still think we could have had a good marriage. For me. Huh. Episode 18, Plague. We got a room full of cornmeal here and there's rats all over it. That can't be good. Did you see that? What's that? Both of us went up to speak with a load of cornmeal. Hanson sells cornmeal too. I don't know how Peterson does it. Your this little kid, Paul, is sick, and of course, he ate some of that cornmeal. And he's really sick. Well, yeah, Paul. Later on, Paul's mother, Sylvie, gets sick, and she goes quickly. She's dead. Doc Baker announces her death. I'm not positive, but I think it's typhus. Oh, no. Because he helped out. What? Charles and the Reverend are both now exposed. It's a cool thing to do. Then I'm in good company, Doc. We'll get to Harper's. They're going to help out. That's Mr. Edwards. He's come down with it, too. They've, uh... 
have a makeshift hospital in the church where all the sick people are. Charles figures it out. And they discover the rats. All this time, it's a hundred yards away. We'll get Peterson to the church. Burn this place to the ground. Well, they did burn it down, and then uh, I guess everybody else got well again, and that's how our episode ends. Episode 19, The Circus Man. As the Ingalls family sleeps, somebody sneaks up with a rifle. What was that? It's Red Buttons. He plays O'Hara, a circus guy. The largest exhibition, but one of the highest quality. When it's getting late, he said he was shooting at a bobcat. Still find a place to stay for the night. They offer let him stay on Ingalls property. Just wait and see. And he claims to have a bunch of magic potions to heal things. In a day or so. Like broken bones. It Doc Faker doesn't buy any of this something. magic potion you stuff, though. You gave me possible pills. They didn't work. But Mr. O'Hara gave me impossible secret powders, and you know what? They work! It's a coincidence. It's like I've been telling you. A useless remedy is as dangerous as a loaded gun. Take it easy, Doc. What's this all about? Miss Tolson has appendicitis. She needs immediate surgery. She refuses. She wants O'Hara. And his magic nostrum. They both had this operation. O'Hara convinces good Mrs. Olsen to have the surgery. Only a small. She's all right. She's going to be as good as new, thanks to Dr. Baker. We are going to ask you to leave. Leave, I will. Well, after he's gone, an accident occurs, and Jack gets run over by some horses while he's chasing a cat. Not dead, but injured. Laura insists that Pod go find Mr. O'Hara. She's convinced he can use a potion to save Jack. You think I wouldn't? Once I heard your little dog was needing me. He basically tells Mr. Ringles, your daughter has hope now. So we wait. And hope the good lords will. He did tell the girls that uh, he has no magic. But sure enough, Jack is better. I told you, Mr. Eric could be Jack Will again. Child of Pain. We have a boy and his drunk dad. I want a wish. You promise not to drink anymore. Yeah. Father beats the boy when he's drunk. He never remembers it, though. Teacher found out about it, Mrs. Beetle. Well, it's They try to I confront the father. Him. I won't live anywhere else. I love my pa. Well, and the boy doesn't show up for school the next day. Charles goes over and finds him uh, beat up again. Father is passed out drunk, so he takes the boy away. The boy stays at the Ingalls. Charles is going to try to get him off the but sauce. But for the best, you'll see. Now, Mr. Ingalls is going to stay with him, and he's going to be just fine. You'll he's not having an easy time giving up the alcohol. And 
improve it every day. He makes him do some hard labor. Well, I'm gonna build a new door. Yeah, that's good. An easy day for a change. No, I said I'm gonna build a door. You're gonna start a cornfield right over there. Or I you know it's the plow I got in the back of the way. You pause that side. Of course, he's eventually able to wean him off the alcohol. And it ends with the boy being in with his dad. Episode 21, Money Crop. Let's be honest with each other, we're in trouble. We've been losing money with every crop. The reason we're losing money is because wheat's our money crop and there's no market for wheat. That brings us to Joseph Cohen. This I guy's a of a lifetime and I'm going to take it. Convinced all the farmers to uh, in change from wheat to corn. He's going to get them a good deal on it. They're all in. So this new guy, Mr. Coulter, goes to Minneapolis and gets all this corn seed for them. But on the way back, there's an accident. His horses take off. And he crashes. Not dead, but stuck and injured. And you tell us, where is he? It's been three days over to his sundown. Three days to bring him far and cover him. Bunch of wet-nosed children, you can't wait three days for something good to happen to you. How long are you willing to wait, Eagles? As long as I have to. Leaving her here? Carrying a child? The men are jerks to his wife. Join him, couldn't she? No! She's pregnant. No! No! <laughs> she runs off and then she collapsed. Mary, she can't get up. She can't get up. Mrs. Coulter. Mrs. Coulter? Drama. Run back and get Dr. Baker, Laura. Her I don't know. Well, I'll tell you where he ain't. He ain't run off the coal to spend our money. You think that about Charles Ingalls, you're dead wrong. Yeah? Well, what am I supposed to think? Neither one of them is here, are they? Charles went off to look for him, and he found him. Charles, the corn. The seed corn. Don't you worry about the seed corn, it's fine. Just take it easy, I'll get you out of here. Mr. Coulter was about to leave town after he healed up. So Charles said, come take a look. He wasn't happy that all the men were jerks to his wife, but all the men are making amends now by... One of your friends and neighbors is going to plant a seed. Until that cloud planted your feet. Episode 22, Survival. You ask Marshall, I'll sleep He's searching for an Indian. And Curtis. I'm Charles Ingalls. This is my wife. We're chasing a savage. A renegade Sioux by the name of Jack Lamehorse. I didn't think there were any Sioux left in these parts. The whole Ingalls family is uh, was taking a trip to Mankato, but on their way back, ran into a huge blizzard late in the season. So they're going to take shelter at some uh, abandoned house or something. It's a really rough blizzard, and Charles goes out to uh, hunt so they have some food, but he's really struggling. The marshal ends up coming back while Charles is out. Uh, back. He's almost frozen. Uh, oh, your face! Meanwhile, Charles had collapsed outside, but wouldn't you know that savage Indian saved him. That's the actor Robert Tessier. Of course, he brings him home. The marshal instantly recognizes him Put the rifle down. and arrests him. Wait. Hold it. Right there. See if I, I said hold it. But when he gets an opportunity, Chief Jack Lamehorse makes a run for it. Returns, he was actually coming back to bring them food. They nurse him back to health. I'll be right with you. We gotta get going. 
And then, uh... His men come back. This is three weeks later, mind you. And he's gonna say it. Nope. No, and, and I ain't looking anymore either. Anyway, the marshal let him go. The Ingalls say goodbye and they head home. Episode 23, To See the World. That's Johnny Johnson from an earlier episode. Johnny's in trouble with his dad. You were told to fix this fence. Yes, sir. A week ago. Well, it was more like a couple of days, Pa, and I'm not going to school anymore. How else are you going to learn? He has wanderlust. I'm tired of reading about faraway places. I'm going to see him for myself. What in the world are you talking about? He ends up pitching a ride with Mr. Edwards to Mankato. All right, come on, get on. He doesn't want to take him, but he you know, I could have walked, but agrees. It's good of you to come by like that and give me a hand. Thank you. In the big city of Mankato, he meets Mimi. I reckon I can. Mr. Edwards uh, arranges with his friends to lose to Johnny, only to uh, win back big for him later, teach him a lesson, but. Johnny decides to quit rather than let them win the ballot money back. Just begun to hurt. They're not happy with him. Violence is not the answer. I think a discussion is in order. Put me down. I'll tear my clothing. This world. Mimi sees a live one in Johnny. Johnny's smitten. Those poker windies, he's gonna buy her that hat. That I bought for Miss Mimi? That's the one. She bought it back. She turned it for that cash. What for? To get a refund? She needed the money more than the hat. Later, Edwards catches her doing the same trick to this guy. Now, what are you trying to pull off with my innocent little daughter here? Daughter? Daughter. And her is innocent and as pure as a spring flower. Johnny wants to give her more money. I can't accept it. Can't accept it. But Mr. Edwards made a deal with her. You want to see folks before they he can keep the first. She can keep the first money as long as she convinces him to go back home, which she does. We'd be finished before supper. Of course, Johnny goes home with Mr. Edwards and is welcomed back by his pa. That's how our episode ends, and that's the last we see of Johnny Johnson. Episode 24, final episode of season one. Founder's Day. Hansonsville is donating a watch and a blue ribbon. Founder's Day is a big competition in town. On Founder's Day. Prizes for the champion logger of Hero Guns. That's Forrest Tucker from F Troop. Did you girls ever have a pie at the Olsen? Carolyn's gonna... Sure, Ma. Three or four times. Birthday Go party. into the pie-making well, contest. Was there anything special? Something you like better than the others? No. What's no. oh, a sudden interest in Harriet Olsen's Olsen going to be in it, too. Well, Mrs. Olsen and I are both entering the pie baby huh? And here's Walnut Grove's Founders Day. It's only the beginning. It's only the beginning, ladies and gentlemen. The next event is the Rope Jumpers for the Championship of Hero Time. The last two standing are Mary and, believe it or not, Willie Olsen. Oh, what happened there? But Willie wins. Laura and Carolyn win the three-legged race against Nellie and Harriet. Getting back something that the Forrest Tucker's to wife. Away from me. That's what he wants. He's up against Charles and uh, watch for that to win that watch. A watch that tells him he is still bull of the wood. In the final contest, it's Charles against Forrest Tucker. Whoever can uh, chop this log quickest. Which turns out to be Forrest Tucker.
You use the borrowed axe till the end. Then you use your old one. You know, you're right. Hi, Pa. Pa decided to make it a little easier for Mr. Taylor to win it. Well, I'll tell you half mine, Mr. Tyler. All right, let's talk about Little House on the Prairie Season 1. This is Part 2 of Season 1. I had to break it up into two parts because uh, reviewing on these hour-long episodes, there's, there's a lot of information on here. So, anyway, um, second half of the series just kind of played out just like the first one. Um, a few guest stars. We saw Sean Penn, um, Forrest Tucker in this last last episode here, The Founder's Day. You know what really surprised me about this show, watching this again, after not seeing it again for many years, is... I thought I had seen every episode of this. In fact, I thought I'd seen them several episodes over and over again, or every episode over and over again, too. But there was a few episodes on this disc that are on this season that um, I didn't recognize. Um, in fact, there may have been like four or five of them that uh, if I had seen, I didn't really remember them. So I was quite surprised by that, actually, because I think, I think there literally is some that I hadn't seen. So there you go. So I'm just very curious how the rest of the series is going to go. It's kind of like watching something new again. So anyway, this is a movie or a show that I used to watch when I was a kid. Um, it showed up in reruns and I saw quite a bit of it there. Always liked the show. It's it's kind of cheesy by today's standards. Very It's a very family values oriented show. Um, and, um, actually, you know, honestly, it's well done though. There's good lessons here. It's a pretty good show. I think overall, again, it ran for nine seasons and, um, uh, Charles Ingalls here, uh, played by, uh, Michael Landon. Karen Grassel is, uh, Mrs. Ingalls. Uh, we have, uh, Laura, played by Laura, uh, Melissa Gilbert. Melissa Sue Anderson, of course, played Mary. And the twins, uh, Sydney and, uh, Lindsay Greenbush played Carrie. We also had Victor French, of course, as, uh, Mr. Edwards. Um, Ellie Olsen was played by Allison Armgram, I think. Willie Olsen was played by, um... Melissa Gilbert's real life brother, um, and his name escapes me at the moment, but it was something Gilbert. So anyway, it's Little House on the Prairie. Uh, I have the DVD here. However, I do know that the entire series has now been put out on Blu-ray, so you can get those too. I'll have a link down below where you can buy those. So let me know what you think about Little House on the Prairie. I'm sure everybody's watched it. Let me know what you think. Leave some comments down below. We'll talk about it. Little House on the Prairie, season one. Watch it. Bye.